We're getting to some deeper stuff, man. A lot of very important stuff, by the way. Dragons, hey, Dragons voice actor stole the show last week. One thing this episode is telling me, Elbaf is going to be a wealth of knowledge for us. And finding out is Kakashi's voice actor made me that much more happy. Like I said last week, Robin deserves to be happy, so I'm happy. I know some people are asking, like, should Olvia be alive as well? I was like, heck no. We don't want to completely ruin Robin's backstory now. And they're giving a lot of recap. Uh, I really like the pre-qualification here to say that it's not as easy as you think. That's not good. Built 900 years ago, attacked 200 years ago. Damn, Luffy. Luffy has no chance of breaking this thing. This is ancient technology. Wow. That's interesting, though. I... Wow. Hmm. This episode had me. I want to say so much, but I'll say it at the end. So I don't spoil the anime only. <laughs> if I had to guess, I know we talked about, we know about Joy Boy and Poseidon having a deal, so maybe that triggered it? うん。しかし、私の科学力でも再現できない部分がある。動力だ。動力。今の世界の常識を変えるほどの力が。うん。今我々の科学力をもってしてもこの鉄の巨人に追いつく。You're showing just how advanced it was back then. I ain't gonna lie. A lot of the flashbacks to a lot of these characters, their hair was on point. They had little bangs. Indeed it was. This is so dope because knowing this is Dragon's son. Oh my gosh, man. The CB say, nah, not today, bro. Not today, bro. <sighs> well, I want to look like Kid. <laughs> Damn, that took it down? Look at Hattori like, <laughs> of course. Not trained like me. みんなと開けると言っています。海賊たちがいるのはまずい。なぜか Look at S Bear behind him. Rob Lucci does have drip though. Oh, Kuma. Oh, 
That, su that sucks so bad. I'm not crapping on the, the voice actor or Dragon's voice actor. But hear how saucy Dragon sound last week and hit in this episode. Dragon sounds like he's barely alive. And he's yelling. Oh my god, bro. Y'all just gotta make the change. Make the switch. Like, nobody voice changes that much. Like, not even that many years. Where does he smack? Because the theory is that he smacks his ass. Or he smacks his chest. Okay. <laughs> I like that dragon didn't even move. He's like, bro. You deny your request. ドクターベガパンクか。<笑> エグヘッドを訪れた政府の船は一石も帰還していない。なぜだ。ふざけるな。イリス、ダメですよ。喧嘩腰は。ドゥソーズレディフォースモーク。I like the OSC that's associated with Vegapunk. I'm not going to lie, but... <laughs> I love that Jinbei's a voice of reason. <laughs> Luffy don't care about this stuff. Carrying on the will of Professor Clover. Ooh, things about to heat up, y'all. Damn, they ain't sure anything else? What is that preview looking like? Man. Oh, Rob. <laughs> this episode made me think more about like what happened in the recent chapters. And again, spoiler alert if you haven't watched it. If you haven't read the manga, it is time to leave. And the Iron Giant attacking... Mary Joa, 200 years ago, when the Fishman Island, when Fishman Island got there, basically got ac accepted into the world government, they attended a reverie. We know that the Gorosei are already in Egghead. They're going to see the Iron Giant and they're going to remember what happened 200 years ago because they've been alive this entire time. I wonder if the Iron Giant was, it was just functioning off of a previous order because we know that Joy Boy and Poseidon had some dealings, right? They had a plan and Joy Boy couldn't fulfill it for whatever reason. So what if the Iron Giant was involved in that? So like, because the Fishman made a move, I guess, did that trigger the Iron Giant? The Fishman being in Mary Joa, was that the plan for the Fishman and Joy Boy to move on Mary Joa? And so that triggered the robot? Who knows? I'm not even sure where the robot was to be triggered. So... I mean, of course, you know, it could just be coincidence, not a correlation, but yeah, we're going deep on uh, after an anime episode, but guys, can't wait till next week. <laughs>